Welcome to Second Chance Points. I'm Dave Rudin. We've been uh, absent from you here for a week, and we're going to try to put together a fast FCAC tournament podcast. But uh, Mike, uh, Mike and I have been keeping the doctors of Fairfield County busy uh, as he continues to, to recover from his heart surgery. And unfortunately, I've, I've been home all week with uh, pneumonia and didn't get to watch, didn't get to make any of the uh, any of the seven games. So, uh, Mike, you got to say it was it was weird. Uh, it was weird not being able to be there. But we do have a we do have a new champion. And uh, last night, Danbury, I thought you know went healthy. Danbury's the best team in in the league talent wise. And they went out there and proved it. <coughs> proved it with with a sixty nine fifty three win over Staples. Well, first of all, Dave, uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, we're back, uh, and that uh, hopefully you're feeling better. I'm on the road to a recovery, so uh, we can. Uh, we've watched uh, we've watched a lot of uh, the history of the ACC tournament and the history of SEC. We can we can talk Staples, Danbury, Pete Maravich, David Thompson. We're 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 well versed today. Exactly, and uh, you know what? Those were some great uh, videos that we saw on the SEC and the ACC. But it was great to see uh, the uh, FCAC tournament. Uh, you know, as unpredictable as the season was this year, uh, I think we both thought Danbury was the best team in the beginning. And as it turned out, uh, they had their ups and downs, but in the end, uh, I thought they played their best game, uh, especially the second half uh, against Staples, a very deserving Staples team, by the way. And uh, Danbury came away with the uh, FCAC championship. You know, we, we really sort of discounted Danbury as we looked at the last couple of weeks of the season. Uh, you know, we were... Ridgefield was on the long winning streak, and, and they earned the respect as a longtime champion. Ward was on the long winning streak. We were looking at sleeper angles, and just very quietly, ever since, <coughs> ever since losing to uh, to Ward and and to uh, Ridgefield, Danbury just kept rolling along, and took his seven game winning streak into the tournament. Had a tough time, especially how to get by Trumbull in the semifinals. But uh, with, with everything on the line in, in the second half yesterday, they uh, they pitched a, a shutout in the second quarter. But they really they only scored seven points themselves. So uh, it, as great as as they had played, they only had a five point lead. It was only two points early in the third quarter, and then a combination of Christian Jeffers. Uh, going off and just a really, really good defensive effort by the entire Danbury team. Carried them to the finish line and their second uh, second title in six years. Well, I think you said the key word, the key player, Christian Jeffries. I mean, he really turned that whole game around. Uh, uh, you know, there's a reason that he was, uh, in my opinion, one of the best three players in the league this year. Uh, and he could shoot it outside. He hit some big threes. He uh, finished up some uh, inside. Uh, but And he also played great defense on Chris Sajak. Uh, and they needed that because Staples gave him everything they could. I mean, Staples, you know, I think came together and uh, really had a great run. Their win over Richfield was probably uh, the best game that I've seen them play all year. And... Uh, better certainly than even their first game when they beat uh, Richfield up in Richfield. Uh, and, and I just think the other thing with Danbury is that um, the first two games of the tournament, I wasn't impressed. I got to be honest with you. Uh, Stanford actually led them after three quarters at Ward, and uh, they found a way to get that game. And then uh, the same scenario played out with Trumbull. Uh, and, and Trumbull, another team nobody gave any credit to, but Buddy Bray did such a great job. Uh, they were actually leading by four, I think, going into the last uh, quarter of the uh, semifinal game. But again, Danbury found a way, and I really think that Danbury, uh, uh, you know, we talked about how uh, 
Ward relies on Plusher and uh, Staples relies on Zajac, but Danbury no, relies on Jeffries. There's no question about it. He makes the players around him better, and he comes up with the big plays. And he was the reason that, in my opinion, that they won the state, the, the FCI championships. And they'll be a tough out in the uh, in the states because uh, uh, Cam uh, is, is back, and uh, you know that group. Uh, are, I think they're established, and I think that they can uh, do some damage in the states. But they do have that championship banner uh, in their pocket, and I congratulate them and and Casey Black. Uh, you know, Casey has, uh, he, he said they underachieved last year and he was kind of disappointed when they lost to Wilton in the first round last year. And I thought that was interesting, your article about how uh, the Jeffries and the rest of the team dedicated themselves uh, toward this goal to win the FCI championship. I mean, even in the spring, if they weren't playing another sport, they went out and ran track. Now, that was a great angle. And I thought that, uh, you know, that showed how bad they wanted it. Yeah, the, the, the only good thing in this day and age, uh, you, you get to stream games and it's <laughs> not the way I would prefer to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, not the way I would prefer to do it, but uh, you can at least cover a game, watch it, and arrange fo uh, phone interviews after. So I was able to get both coaches I was able to get uh, Jeffers, and he, he gave me, uh, you know, gave me that story angle about how the the Walton game last year when they had to like, scurry the end of the year to get the final seed in the tournament and got knocked out in the first round when they thought they could do more, and how that was sort of the impetus for all the well, work they did. And you, uh, you know, you summed it up uh, right, and and. Casey gave me the quote. He said he, he, he thought in the first two games against Stanford and Trumbull, the team just got by. And then last night, they just played really well. Yeah, it was a spurt, though, in the second <laughs> half that uh, that really turned it on. And I should say that the spurt in the fourth quarter, because, uh, you know, Staples wouldn't go away. They, they kept chipping away and chipping away. And I think they were down four or five going into the last uh, quarter, and then that's when they turned it around. I think uh, Jeffries hit a three and a couple of baskets inside. But you know they they really played well together. And Casey said it. I think uh, when he you quoted him, defense and rebound is going to win it. They didn't look great offensively in the first the second quarter, especially. But uh, you know they played great defense, uh, and I think that uh, the offense finally took over when they got to the uh, the fourth quarter. And it was uh, a little bit too much uh, for Staples. But Staples has nothing to be ashamed of. I was really impressed uh, by their play throughout the whole tournament. And basically, the way they came back after some tough losses they had during the season and, and was able to defeat Richfield. And maybe we should give a little credit to Richfield. I mean, there's a team that has won it, had won it four straight years in a row, five out of the past six. They lost their big guy who let the prep school and everybody kind of said, well, Richfield's going to come back to the pack. They didn't. They won the regular season uh, and kudos to them and to uh, coach uh, uh, Drew. They re Andrew really did a great job with them. And, uh, you know, they just, they just had a bad night against Staples and obviously credit to Staples on that. But uh, what they've accomplished in that program and that culture I mean, I have to admire it, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, it, it took a great effort by a Staples team to beat them. And again, like I said, Staples should be proud, even though they, they uh, came up short against Danbury. Uh, Zajac had a great year. I think the guards, uh, Chris Sales, uh, and, and the young freshman, uh, Klecko, I think is his name. Klecko, yeah. Klecko, okay. He, he did a great job. Uh, Cody Sales, as I said, and I think um, uh, the other guy, uh, Rob, 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 yeah. yeah, when Rob, he came back, they made him Rob, better. Rob, there, Rob. There, there are two things that changed that team around. Yeah, you, you had uh, you know 
Cody Sale was, was a, a steady player at, at guard. And, uh, you know, Chris Ajak was one of the three best players in the league, but he needed more offensive support. And the two things that changed that team around to get it to still playing last night was the emergence of, of freshman Sam Clacko into a real reliable number two scorer type, uh, which he was the, the last few games of the year until the final, and then the return of Rothenberg. And those two players really were the complementary perimeter players that they needed no, for, for Zajac outside, to inside. No question. And I think you have to give a lot of credit to Dave because uh, the coach, because it, it really, it's tough to be a first year coach and, uh, you know, take over a team like that and, uh, and get them to perform to their best ability. And I think uh, he did that and he, he deserves a lot of credit also. Um, but uh, the, the big thing in the, in the Richfield, it's going to be in the, uh, the final game against Danbury, uh, is that they just couldn't hit the outside shot. They didn't make the shots. They had open shots. They just didn't hit them. And that's they were, they were, they were a streaky team all year. You, you, you look at you, the games they won, they, they were hitting their outside shots. The games they didn't win, they weren't hitting them. Uh, they, I, I, again, as the – as as you got Clacko and, and Rothenberg, they they got hot the the last two weeks of the season. Last, uh, well, got, Rothenberg came back for the playoffs, but with with Clacko and they were getting more balanced scoring. You know, Cody Sale was doing a good job. So, uh, you know, they they got hot at they got hot at the right time in a league where you know, let's face it, the talent level was really really pretty even. Uh, it was going to come down to who got hot. Now, credit credit to, to Staples, which had never even reached the final before. You have a first-year coach. You have a team which, other than its center, has virtually you know started the year with almost no varsity experience, and, and they did a good job. And and this is uh, – you, you can see it on TV. I wish I was there. But it was really, really cool. Uh, you know, Staples, uh, until about three years ago, was not really known – for, for having a big fan base. And you looked in the bleachers and, and you thought it was Ridgefield or Wilton with, with the Staples fans taking up the, you know, the whole uh, bleachers under the basket. So it was, it, it was a really, even, even though they're disappointed in the outcome, it was a really nice night for, for Westport basketball. I echo everything you said on Ridgefield. You, you look at the talent level on that team compared to the rest of the league, they should have lost more than once. They played a lot of close games, but they didn't. And, you know, I, that game was real simple to me. Sometimes you know, we can overanalyze basketball. That game came down to real simple. Staples made their shots and Ridgefield didn't. They both had a... a zoom. <laughs> I thought, That's what it's all I thought about. The, what? the second half... Uh, the whole game, Z Zajac just, I mean, was, was like having an octopus in the paint. Nobody could do anything. Well, I think that was yeah, that was a key point because uh, he was able to stay uh, pretty much in the paint, uh, and I think that helped a lot. He altered shots, blocked shots, uh, and as you say, it all comes down to basketball to making shots, and uh, in that game – Staples made their shots, and uh, in the Danbury game, they had open shots and, and wasn't able to convert. But a lot of that has to do with the defense uh, of, uh, of Danbury's, Danbury. Danbury's defense was terrific. It's funny. I, I was texting with a coach and earlier today, and the coach credited Danbury's offense for winning the game. I thought, and I said, I, you know, I disagree with you. I thought they – I thought they played a good, not a great offensive. I thought Jeffers had a great offensive game. I, I thought Nez Perkins for the second game played really well. But they, they played a good they played a good offensive game. It wasn't spectacular. I thought their their defense was really, really good. Uh Staples had to work for their for their open looks. And as I said before, to Dan Murray, beginning of the year, everybody thought they were going to win it, have a good chance to win it. And to, to follow that through and to go out and win it, uh, I think 
is really something that is special and something they'll remember and cherish always. Um, and and if as long as we're giving like uh, um, good effort awards, I know uh, obviously going. staples, but I think you got to look at Trumbull Bloody really. Bray, yeah. uh, they almost didn't make the tournament. And they were ahead of Danbury by a four. And it shows the FCAC this year. I mean, the league was very unpredictable, and anybody could beat anybody on a given night. Uh, and if they, uh, if they played this tournament next week, we could have had a Ridgefield Trumbull final. And if we played yeah, the tournament would, off, I I think Danbury had the best talent in the in, in the in the league overall. And uh, when it was all said and done, the most talented team did win. But again, it was so close that if if you played this tournament uh, ten times, it'd be interesting. You would have had about five, six teams in in the final. Well, well, even the tournament, the teams that didn't make the tournament. I mean, uh, I thought for sure Brian McMahon was going to make the tournament. They beat Staples actually during the year, and they beat Stanford during the year. Uh, and you know, they didn't make the tournament, uh, so that. Um, you know, nine or ten teams uh, really had a chance. I know even the Richfield, which was to me a great job, uh, they almost lost the Darien a couple of weeks into the season. So everybody had a chance to to beat somebody on a, on a given night. But in the end, Danbury did what they had to do and was successful and, and won the FCAC championship. But it was a great year for the FCAC, I thought. Yeah, I, I, an, another dynamic too. Uh, yeah, Cam Perkins did not play. Cam Perkins, uh, an All FCAC player, one of the five best players in the league. Uh, he's been sidelined for a month with a bad ankle sprain. He came back last night. He scored six points. He wasn't really a factor in the outcome. I, I'm sure he was an emotional boost having him there, but in terms of uh, the strategy in the game, he didn't have a big effect. But when you lose some somebody like that, and and you have a team with okay but not great depth, other players have to have to step up, and uh, you know whether whether it was Nez or Kush Perkins or, or uh, you know one Campbell one one of the other guys, uh, you know diff, different people just stood up stepped up at different times, and and Jeffers just really. Jeffries just became a, a real dynamic player up at both ends of the court. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's I, no question. I agree with you 100 percent. But um, when the camera went down, I think that Jeffries picked his game up and he was able to uh, to kind of lead the way for Danbury. Um, and it was good to see Cam back in the game. Uh, but, you know, obviously he wasn't 100 uh, percent when I saw him. Uh, you know, dressed, and I said to you in a text that I, he's going to play. At some point, he came in. It was, you know, you could tell he was sluggish, and but it was almost like Willis Reed in the Knicks many years ago, uh, giving a, an inspiration to his team. I mean, if you could see the the faces light up, the fans light up when he went in. Uh, it was it was a great thing, and uh, hopefully he gets healthy for the state tournament and can help Danbury make a run there. Uh, one or two things, and we're just uh, doing a real. I wish we could make this a little bit longer, but uh, I don't want to subject you all to uh, to coughing. I didn't, I didn't know if I'd be able to uh, get this done, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Well, you're getting better, though, Dave. Right? This is, you went <laughs> would, to the yeah. doctor yesterday, and he said you're getting better, so that's key. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm seeing the doctor again Monday. I'm hoping I maybe by midweek I'll be cleared to start. Going back to games, we'll see. But uh, shout out to to the coaches. We we talked about this. They they announced the all FCAC teams, and uh, I I I think the coaches get a an A plus on on this one in, in terms of in a year where after the first four or five players it, it was pretty uh, pretty equal. But uh, first of all, uh, you know Jack Plesser, player of the year. I don't think anybody can argue with that. He had a. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't argue with it. Fan, I always thought that was good. Uh, fantastic but there are year. Several others. 30, 32 or thirty-three points in that quarterfinal loss. Uh, the 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 one big uh, one big upset in the tournament, though. Uh, yeah, Trumbull played so well. 
maybe that wasn't uh, down the stretch as big an upset. Uh, Andrew McClellan getting the top seed. Uh, and, yeah, it's and, about and time. And season title with, you know, again, with uh, with a team that had a whole different dynamic than what he was used to. Uh, you can't argue with that. I think the top five players in the league is, is as easy as, as it's ever been. Uh, Chris Ajak, Cam Perkins, Christian Jeffers, Jack Plesser, and Jalen Brown of Norwalk. And then I'll do uh, five, five, and five in, in the uh, Rudin Report team. But uh, the, the FCAC does eight. Uh, Tom McKiernan, I said was gonna was gonna end up being number number six for Wilton. He was in there. EJ Presley from Stanford. <clears throat> he was there, and then uh, Sean Sean Reset from Trumbull. Who, again, if if you want to uh, nitpick on eight, nine, or ten, you you can do it. But you're really nitpicking. Sean uh, Reset. Really, Sean, really. Sean Reset really came on strong. And was one of the best players in the league the last month of the season. It was a big think, reason Trumbull was in the championship. I the think coaches tournament. appreciate a guy like Sean, and I think he should be uh, on that first team. <laughs> and to be honest with you, the coaches got it absolutely right, in my opinion. Um, and the one that I uh, people may say, uh, Presley from Stanford, you know, is he long? Yeah, yeah, and tell you what, people don't year. realize how good that kid's going to be, how good he is right now. Yeah, uh, and what only, he did for Stanford. Yeah, he there there. If, if, if you question EJ Presley, then you didn't watch EJ Presley play all oh, year. He had he had a great season, and, and uh, again, you know, second and third team. And he's a sophomore, right? Yeah, quarterback yeah. on the football team. He's just a a good athlete. The uh, the sky's the the limit for for him. He's we're going to be talking about him as Player of the Year candidate next year and, and the year after. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, as I say, he kind of led that Stanford team uh, uh, to the success they had. And, uh, you know, nobody really thought Stanford was going to be <clears throat> uh, someone to be worried about this year. But uh, uh, because of him and I think the Winchester transfer and also uh, J.J. Salvatore, uh, they gave Coach Latour uh, everything. He was able to blend it together. They made the uh, tournament. And as I said, they led Danbury by three going into the uh, final quarter, but weren't able to hold off. So Stanford's a team maybe next year you got to worry about. Yeah, I mean, they were a team this year you had to worry. You know, they were, they were the kind of the mercurial team that we weren't quite sure uh, what they were going to do beginning of the year. And there were times they looked, you know, like a title contender. There were times they struggled, but all, all in all, uh, a good year. So... We're going to be coming and all back. back too, right? uh, yeah. So we're, I, Mike and I have planned uh, a special state tournament podcast, which is going to be less a preview and more. Uh, Mike and I get ourselves worked up talking, uh, talking about the state playoffs. And, and all I'll say is on, on Thursday night, Owen 20 West Hill is playing number one East Catholic. In, in the Division One tournament, which is supposed to be the 16 best teams, in, in I mean, to me that's an absolute joke. <laughs> I don't it's, understand. It's, it's but we do have some. It's an embarrassment to Connecticut, and I'm cutting this off here because we're going to both get worked up, and we, and we've been doing no, this, but... we've been doing this to each other. But the state tournament basically is is an embarrassment to to everybody who After likes the Division One level. State. Is... Yeah. Visual level, especially. And, I, and let me just say this, <clears throat> that I don't think they care. I think really when they get down to it, they want East Catholic to bury West Hill and uh, West Hill feel sorry for them. But they just care about <clears throat> the finals at Mohegan. And they're hoping that East Catholic plays Notre Dame or West Haven or Northwest Catholic, draw the big crowd, 10,000, make the money. Uh, it's, it's, I don't want to start going off on a tangent yeah that's here. why i'm that's why i'm trying to let's let's save it for the 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 podcast because we're just going to go worked up but to, to me no. the state tournament is is one of the most embarrassing things i've seen in high school sports here. but we do have we do have well 
we do have a uh, we're going to do a special moderator. podcast where Andrew we're... McClellan is coming to keep us calm uh, and he has his own thoughts on the state tournament <laughs> And uh, uh, I think he'll keep us uh, keep us in line. He's going to he's going to have to play moderator for the two of us because you and I both get worked <laughs> up and just. Uh, but but Drew, Drew does have some good ideas. He came. Uh, he, he's fr from Chicago where they, they've done things a lot differently. But the, the bottom line is, if, if you have an 0 20 team playing in, in the Division one tournament, if you have three teams under 500, if you're even allowed to use the word opt, asking to go up or down when you're trying to get the best 16 teams, you will never have the, you're not gonna have the best 16 teams. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna discuss what should be done, what could be done. Maybe we'll do a little bit of a, a preview then. But uh, again, uh, and I apologize for all the coughing. I just really wanted to try uh, and, and put together, Mike and I wanted to, Try to try have some kind of an FCAC tournament podcast since we've been off all week. And uh, yeah, um, why don't we just wrap this up while, while I'm still able to talk here? And uh, let's uh, tip our tip our hats to to Danbury, to Casey Bach and his team on on a great job on on navigating the field. Congratulations to to Staples on a great run, getting to the final. FCAC season's over. It's state tournament time, and we're going to be back with uh, a special podcast, a little bit of a preview, and, and mostly a look at what can be done with the state tournament. We'll be back later in the week, and uh, sorry again for all the coughing. Thanks for listening. Mike, we'll talk soon. Feel better? Go get them, Dave. <laughs>